We'll begin our session. So, Zach, it's really nice to have you for the fourth year in a row in India. So, we have been uh, doing some session in different uh, conferences since 2015. So, let me start with you with the first question. So, recently you became a, a general counsel for ICA. So, tell me something about it. Yeah. So, it's, it's been absolute pleasure to return to India. I feel like it's almost my second home. I've been here. This is my fourth year in a row coming to India. And I've been tremendously excited by the, the data and the information that's been presented today and the energy amongst all the attendees. And I've known Ankur for four years and we collaborate as lawyers together. And you're asking me about the Internet Commerce Association. So that's at internetcommerce.org. And what is it? Well, it's an association that represents domain name registrants, domain name investors, domainers. It's based in Washington, D.C., and it's been around for 16 years, and we get involved in the policy. So, for example, if there's a, a policy that tries to r raise the price for .com domain names, or a policy that prevents access to who is details to make inquiries or respond to inquiries, from domain buyers or sellers. Or if there is a domain name dispute about when can someone take away your domain name and when, as you as a trademark owner, can you take a domain name away from somebody. And uh, you know, some of our members are Cedo and GoDaddy are our members. And one of our largest members has almost five million domain names. We have some major, major domain name investors and we protect domain names as an asset class, which we believe should be freely tradable, non-infringing to trademarks. And so the title of, of, of this session is uh, Jugar and Domain Name Law. And let me give you the first tip, is that uh, Angkor, he's a judge, an arbitrator for domain name disputes. And he, he hears cases that I, as a lawyer, might, might bring or represent a party in a domain name dispute. So the tip is if you know the judge, you don't need Jugar. <laughs> <laughs> but so tell, tell me, what is the difference, Ankur, between investing in domain names and being a cyber squatter? And tell me about the, the difference between .in disputes and .com disputes. Fine, yeah. Uh, so uh, as you know now, the domain name dispute policy is there. That is UDRP for the GTLDs and INDRP for the .in domain names. So basically, in the initial 1990s, as the domain name registration came into being, many such cases came forward where the famous brand names based domain name were registered by few people, like mtv.com and so on. So the, any person who registers a domain name that is based upon some famous brand name or a trademark, that will be referred as a cyber squatting. But otherwise, if someone is holding some domain name or investing in a domain name which has some generic value or some other value to him, of which he is making some legitimate use even, or even if he wants to sell to, to someone, then it will be a domain name investing. But of course, we, over the years, uh, this uh, UDRP policy came into being in 1999, while the INDRP policy came into being in 2006. But over the years, we have seen that uh, there is a little difference between the two policies work. Like to take an example of Haughty company, that is H-O-T-T-I-E, that is an Australian-based company. They filed a UDRP in the 2016 and over the Haughty.com, and then an INDRP over the Haughty.in a month later. But they were successful in proving their trademark rights sorry, they were not successful in proving their trademark rights under the UDRP for the .com domains and their complaint was denied. But under INDRP, they were successful because the generic meaning of the term was not upheld. In, for such cases, there are many different factors that contribute. Like firstly, in Haughty.com, that was represented, the client was represented by Zach himself. So of course, when you have a professional representation in a domain name case, that helps you. And secondly, few things that are lacking in, uh, under INDRP, like you ca a respondent can't apply for a three-member panel if he feels that his case is strong enough 
and he he may some uh, see some risk he may he should have an opportunity to apply for a three member panel okay. but such things are not there sure all right so it sounds encore like there's one system of, of law to deal with disputes about .com domains yeah. and a, a different system to deal with .in domains. Yeah. And it also sounds like the, the legal system for .in domains isn't as favorable to domain registrants and investors. So it, t tell me, is, is this, the .in system um, does it impact the investability or the investment quality of a domain name because it's easier to take it away even when it's a generic dictionary word? Yeah, of course. Uh, the investors are a little reluctant to invest in dot in domains. It's not only because of few precedents were there, like in the initial year in the 2006 when the INDRP policy came in, uh, few, some INDRPs were f f uh, were uh, filed over very generic terms like hotels.in, computer.in, web.in, internet.in, and jobs.in. So, and secondly, the INDRP has a provision to f put a cost upon the domain name holder. So, in many cases, even cost up to $10,000, or oh, sorry, rupees 10 lakh rupees, that comes to rupees $15,000 has been imposed. So, that also uh, demotivates a domain investor to invest in, in a dot in domain name. So Zach, give uh, the audience a tip that how to get a higher value sale in a domain name. Right, so you know, in domain name law, there's really two sides of it. There's the dispute side, which we briefly heard about. There's also the transaction side. And, and the dispute side you try to avoid, and we'll talk a little bit about that in our session too, how to avoid the disputes, but the transaction side is where you make money, right? And so if you read some of the domain blogs and the domain news, you'll have heard about some major domain investors who have uh, sold domains for incredible prices. So for example, you'll read that someone sold a domain name for $50,000. And you ask yourself, how, how did this fellow or how did this woman sell a domain for $50,000. And, you know, as, as a lawyer, I've been practicing since 1999. And so wh when I used to introduce myself to the friends of my family as an internet lawyer, they would say, that sounds very nice, but what is internet law? That was, that's how long ago it was. But these, these domain investors who sell for 50000 they have to do something that's very, very difficult that you might want to learn from. And this is what I've seen myself firsthand from working with some of the largest domain investors is in order to sell a domain name for 50,000, generally speaking, you know, you can make a sale by outbound uh, sales. And, and we're going to hear from some experts, and we've heard from some experts earlier today about how effective outbound sales are. But generally speaking, those higher number sales come from inbound sales, from picking, of course, quality domains and waiting for the inquiry to come in. But when the inquiry comes in, the person very rarely says, I'm willing to pay you 50,000 and you take it. There's a negotiation. And so when someone offers, let's say, 5,000 for the domain, the seller has to do something very difficult. He has to say no to $5,000. When I would sell it for 5,000, my wife would certainly sell it for 5,000. So then, he, then the offer goes to 10, and 15, and 20, and 25. He says no, 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 over and over again. That's how he gets to 50,000. So it's a very difficult thing to turn down a considerable sum like 5,000 in order to get the big sales. But in every case where you read about a big sales, because the person turned down very, very good money to get even greater money. Right. So as you refer that uh, a domain purchase agreement can be, uh, can be helpful for making a good sale, can help. Yes, right. So, so, you know, one of the things that we've both experienced as domain lawyers is that, um, you need to have some credibility with the seller. And, right. when, and they, when they're about to spend a significant amount of money with you, they want to know that you're trustworthy and that you're professional, of course. And so having a, a formal domain name agreement uh, or a domain name lease agreement, and we can talk a little bit more about that, can be very helpful. But how do you afford a domain name purchase agreement when you're just starting out? Uh, you don't necessarily have the money or the inclination to go hire a lawyer to prepare you one custom made, but we're here to help, aren't we? Yeah, 
so we have a special gift for you there is a uh, template of the agreement that we have uploaded on a website so if you go to domainlawyer.in slash purchase you will get a free template for the domain purchase agreement that will be available for the next 24 hours that you can download and use for any sales of yours Excellent. so we, we talked a little bit about domain name dispute cases let's share a little bit more jugar with these yeah. audience members and explain to them how do you turn a losing case into a winning case when it comes to a domain name dispute let's say that someone a trademark owner brings a UDRP against one of your domain names and you fight hard but you are unsuccessful and the and the, no, the domain name is going to be taken away from your account yeah. what can you do about it in that situation to turn that losing situation into a winning situation yeah of course if you are holding any valuable domain name and if you find uh, you think that there is maybe some similar trademark in any part of the world so there are chances that they that person may bring an action against you because a domain dispute provi provides a very a summary procedure for any company to get hold of the domain name that they want so you need to be a little active on that part and you can uh, what you can do is you can keep your domain name with the registrar in which you are residing to explain it like if a UDRP proceedings com comes against you and the decision is unfavorable then an option is provided to the complainant that is the trademark holder to file uh, to choose a jurisdiction in which an injunction can be filed by the domain name holder if he loses the case now this jurisdiction can be either a place where the principal office of the domain registrar is or secondly where your address is so mainly the complainants tries to choose the jurisdiction of the principal place of office of the registrar and which mostly is not in your country and after a domain dispute decision is given you have just maximum of 10 working days in which you have to file a injunction in a court of law as per the jurisdiction that was chosen by the trademark holder in the complaint filed before the WIPO under UDRP. So it's quite important that you are active from this moment and keep your domain names with a say for example if you are residing in USA then you can make sure that your domain names are with GoDaddy but if you are in some other country then you can do a little research to find out which registrars are located in your country and accordingly you can keep a domain name there so that in case of any eventuality you can take a proper action and save your domain name rights and even in some cases i have experienced that even in most of the cases the jurisdiction is of different country then in that case even you have to require to travel to that country to save your domain name so it becomes a very uh, expensive even and time consuming and even to very uh, scared short time is there to act within a 10 days time right and so i one of the benefits of this uh procedure that uh that you've noted is that if you tie up a domain name in court uh yeah. let's say in an indian court the case can take some time and then what can you use that time for yeah so once you get uh, uh, just under the UDRP procedure you need to show them that that matter has been filed in the court and it may take them few years to decide or go even into facts or serving of notices but by then the complainant knows that this matter has now been stopped by the court of law so now they will have only option to settle the matter with you and in the uh, normal course of time it may take at least five to six years of time for any such matter to be decided in an Indian court so this is the so it's always better to keep the domain name with the register of your choice so that it's easier for you to approach a court in that jurisdiction and bring an action yeah thank you so Zach how you think that a domainer can avoid a UDRP right so this is the most important question in my opinion is because you hopefully will never be in a domain name dispute hopefully you'll register a domain name for as an investment and you'll be able to sell it but selling sometimes takes some time from the day that you register to the day that you actually sell it and in the meantime 
your domain name could be exposed to a dispute. For example, suppose I registered chairs.com. Just for example, it's already taken, I'm sure, but let's just say I registered chairs.com. And I just um, uh, don't do anything with it or I, I park it. Somebody could come along and say, well, uh, we have a trademark for chairs. And they could be in another country. Uh, and you may never have even heard of this company that has a trademark for chairs. And they can make the accusation that you register the name and you're not doing anything with it. You're just sitting on it, you're squatting on it. And we believe that you must be doing that to interfere with our business and our trademark. So it's very simple to avoid this. It takes a little bit of effort, but it can be well worth it. What, if you build a website, even if it's a very simple website, that's in the case of chairs.com, something about chairs to demonstrate that the reason that you registered the domain name is because of its dictionary or generic meaning. That shows the world and this trademark owner that you have a legitimate interest in the domain name. And if it's not a dictionary word, if it's a brandable name or a, a, a unique set of letters or something, still find some use for that brand, for that domain name to demonstrate that you're actively using it. Because when it comes to dispute, having shown demonstrated use yeah. can be key to winning one of these disputes. Yeah, of course. And even in it, when it is a case of acronyms, you can, of course, still make some legitimate use of it and show that it stands for something else in a similar way. And like there was a case that, that you were telling me about with uh, hotels that was yeah. almost this exact same situation where someone had a trademark for hotels, if you can believe it. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, there was uh, a case under the INDRP for the domain of raffles.co.in. The chain of hotel that is based in Singapore, Raffles Singapore, brought an action against them. And this domain name, that Indian domain name, was held by a hotel in Kota. And they genuinely had a hotel by that name, Hotel The Raffles. And even they had a website at that time. But I, but I think, but the mistake they had made is that before registering a domain name or even taking up that as a uh, their brand name they should have taken some made some effort to search through a trademark registry database to see that any conflicting mark is not there because in india if you want to register a, a domain name it's very simple thing either you google it to see that any conflicting mark does not exist in the same class that is they were uh, operating, uh, going to operate as a hotel in hospitality industry and there was already a mark applied in that class before the trademark registry. So in India you can search for the uh, trademarks on the website ipindia.gov.in. Well, you know, in that, let me give you a tip as, as well about searching um, trademarks worldwide. It's something that if, if, a, if a client comes to me and says, Zach, I'm thinking of registering this particular domain name. Uh, are there any trademarks that should inhibit me or dissuade me or, or a, re a reason why I shouldn't register this name? What I do, and you can do this too, and it's very easy, and it'll take you just a couple times to get the hang of it, is you could, uh, if you Google uh, WIPO, W-I-P-O, Global Brand Database. WIPO is the World Intellectual Property Organization. Global Brand Database. They have a d database that compiles the trademark registries of something like over 30 countries all in one database. And it's a free service. Anybody can use it. And it works just like any search engine. You, you type in the word and it will show you all the results from all over the world in one shot. And so the way I use this and the way you can use it too is I'll put in chairs uh, into the search box. And if I see there's many companies from all over the world, different companies that all share the same brand of chairs, one for chairs orange juice, one for chairs vacations, one for chairs cars, that tells me that there's, if there's 500 of companies all coexisting, living together, sharing this trademark, there's probably room for one more company as long as it's in a different category, it doesn't copy the goods. There's room for chairs monitors, chairs, speakers. And so that's, if there's a lot and a varied amount, it means it might be a good idea to register the domain. But if I do a search and I see 
there's one company that's, that owns all the trademarks worldwide for this one word, that shows to me that they probably have them essentially a monopoly over this brand. Nobody else, there's no room in the market for somebody else because one, one company is the predominant user uh, and has the only reputation associated with this particular brand. And so I would probably avoid registering that domain name. Yeah, right. It's a good option to search in the global trademarks, but unfortunately it doesn't contain the database of Indian trademarks. For that, you will have to visit the ipindia.gov.in website. So, Zach, coming to the next one. So, if a buyer can't afford a domain name, what options he has? Okay, so this almost sounds like a trick question. If a buyer can't afford a domain name, what options do you have? Yeah. Because the, the simple answer is if a buyer can't afford a domain name, you can't make a deal with him or her, right? But there's actually a creative solution that s can sometimes work. Many times, a lot of the uh, established uh, domain investors, uh, they will receive an offer that is too low. For example, a startup loves your domain name, but they can only offer you 100 and you want 5,000 and you negotiate as hard as you can and you still can't get them up to a price that you're willing to part with this domain name for. So normally you would say, well, we don't have a deal and they walk away and they pick another name. But there's another option that you can sometimes explore and that's a domain name lease. And so what we do with a domain name lease is we say to the, the buyer, all right, you can only afford 200 now. Give us the 200 and pay us 100 every month until the purchase price is reached. That's called the domain name lease. And at the end of it, they'll have uh, spent enough money to buy the whole domain name from you. Um, and at any point in time, if their business takes off and they have enough money, they can buy out the agreement. And that's called giving them an option to purchase it or buying it out early. And the question that will come up is, well, who holds the domain name in the meantime and can they use the domain name? The, can the buyer use the domain name in the meantime? The answer is yes. The whole idea is the buyer can start using the domain name from day one even before they purchase the entire domain name. By setting, the seller will set the name servers, point them towards where the buyer wants and the buyer must promise uh, to only use it in a lawful and fair manner, not do anything to damage or harm the domain name in the meantime and the seller will still hold on to it. And sometimes for higher value domain names, it's put into the hands of a trusted third party, such as a lawyer or escrow.com. But now you're probably saying, well, this sounds like we're going to need uh, a legal agreement, a lease agreement to do it. And yes, often you'll use a lease agreement and I think you might have uh, yeah. something about this. Yeah, there's always also a lease agreement, draft agreement that we have uploaded on the website that you can download and refer that is on domainlawyer.in slash lease. So it will be available for the next 24 hours for you to download and refer. Yeah. So Ankur, you've been practicing internet law for many years and you're well known amongst Indian domainers and the internet community in India. Have you met through your practice and have clients and friends and colleagues who have made a successful career investing in domain names? Yeah, of course, I have seen many of domainers doing very well and uh, as per my experience that mainly those who have invested in the dot coms or GTLDs, they are doing very well because in India for dot in domain names, the market is still to get matured and secondly, the, uh, the person, the domainers who have a s some support staff or the team of people to do outbound marketing for the domain names are doing very well and uh, also I remember as you refer client there was uh, a, uh, as we are referring to the agreements so what happened there's a f famous uh, temple in Vrindavan they had a three letter dot org domain name but what they did was the domain name was uh, under the control of their accountant and that accountant left the job with them and migrated to Canada, and, but till the next one year, they ha didn't take notice of the same and that who is information and the control of the domain name remained in his name. So later when they tried to uh, get back the domain name, he denied. So now those people have given, 
but they were even i advised them to get, take legal action but they were not interested to go much further so they then purchased the three letters similar dot org dot in domain name so it's always better whenever you are dealing in a domain name you have proper agreement even with the employees if you have provided them with the control to manage them for you right right yeah yeah and i guess the the other tip is always make sure that the domain is registered in your own account and not yeah yeah it, it should be in your account yeah. even and always once need to check that who is is always appears in your name yeah so what do you think is the future of the domaining and the market right okay so you know as i mentioned i've been uh, working with domain investors since 1999 it's been quite a while and and there's been ups and ups and downs in the market and many of you may have heard that there was recently a big boom amongst chinese domainers where they were buying up a lot of valuable three letter domains and many other domain names and that subsided somewhat but it, the chinese buyers are still very very active and excellent to do business with um but my, my hope and expectation, one of the reasons that I keep coming to India, and, and like, like Soren, who's the CEO of this amazing show, we bet on India. We feel that India has the most tremendous potential to be a burgeoning buyers and sellers market, and I expect to see more of that. The other aspect of this is that there's trends come and go. Uh, I remember when uh, many years ago one of my clients was selling a, a, a nutraceutical health product, uh, millions of dollars worth of it online, and that was a fad and that came and went. Now I see with cryptocurrency there's a lot of purchasing power by companies that are, have issued ICOs that are uh, exchanges that are buying very valuable domain names. If, if I was investing in domain names, I would look probably for domain names that uh, companies that do cryptocurrency might be interested in acquiring from you. A few weeks ago, a, uh, one of my clients per in the crypto industry purchased a domain for one million US dollars, and it was in incredible. And so I think that that can happen to anybody because they're not only looking for dictionary word domain names, they're looking for all kinds of domain names. Right. So any tips you want to give to the audience? One, one last tip uh, before we wrap up and maybe there'll be some questions yeah. is that some of you may have heard about GDPR, uh, which has been mentioned a few times over this conference, and that is a European regulation that's coming into effect May 25th, and what it effectively is doing is changing the way the WHOIS database as we know it is. Many registrars are going to be blocking out the information from everybody on the WHOIS database, making it all privacy protected by default. GoDaddy isn't doing that. GoDaddy is limiting the information, but still having it out there. And that's, that's great because we in Canada, uh, I'm a Canadian uh, a citizen and, and lawyer, we went through something very similar 10 years ago where all .CAs went to automatic privacy protection and it hurt the domain name business. My advice to you is make sure to the extent possible that you opt out of concealing your information in the who is if you want to be contacted. Because in my experience, people who want to buy a domain name like to see the name and address and phone number and email address of the person who owns it rather than concealed through privacy. That will help you increase your sales. Right. So we can have some questions. Sure. So we'll wait for uh, the gentleman with the microphone to, yep. to come to you. Uh, they and, and are if, a lot. Yeah. If they're difficult questions, Ankur is going to be answering them. Okay. See the lawyers there. <laughs> Okay, we'll have quick only two questions because I have to get the program okay. on uh, track. Yeah, myself Bharat from Deep Technologies. I have a question uh, out of domain. My complete website uh, copied by my competitor with 90% content and uh, graphics too. So what can I, action I can take? Did you get the question? Go ahead. His competitor has copied 90% of his website okay. with design oh. and content. Is, is there some competitor in the room? Is your competitor here? We can beat him up. <laughs> we would have served notices to him right now, but yeah. I'll let the, lawyer, the gentleman, Uncle Sir, please take over. So, so when your website has been copied, of course, uh, you have the copyrights in your content and even the, in the design. Then under the Copyrights Act, you can even uh, bring a criminal action against that person, firstly. 
you can register a police complaint and secondly you can bring an uh, civil suit in a court of law and take an injunction against uh, uh, that domain name specifically and bring it down. Yeah. For further consultation, you can take his card. Yeah, of course, you can talk to him later on also, that's what I meant. Uh, second question. Yeah. Hi, I'm Vivek from L.R. Uh, see, I can introduce a whole trademark uh, clearing house to help uh, trademark owners protect their trademarks from infringements. Now, does an entry in the trademark clearing house database help when a trademark owner is filing a UDRP or a URS or an INDRP for that matter? Okay. So that's, I, can, I just can see that you have some uh, high degree of familiarity with the subject matter, maybe even more than me. Uh, so I can only do my best answer, but I think the question was is, uh, there's something called the Trademark Clearinghouse that's operated by ICANN, and we're going to uh, have the, the privilege of hearing from the head of ICANN India, uh, Samran Gupta, very shortly. Uh, but the, the Trademark Clearinghouse is a procedure where a trademark owner can register their trademark um, and it's generally used in the new GTLD system. So when someone comes out with a brand new GTLD, uh, part of the deal was that uh, they, um, trademark owners didn't want all kinds of um, uh, people registering their trademark in the new GTLD. So the trademark clearinghouse is used uh, for two purposes. One, it sends a notice to new, uh, new GTLD registrants that the trademark owner uh, has registered has a trademark and maybe you don't want to register this name and the second purpose is there's a procedure called the URS uniform rapid suspension uh, which is a way of take uh, disabling a uh, new GTLD domain name and then it is helpful because the complainant will deposit the certificate of registration essentially from the trademark clearinghouse uh, and, and that is used as part of the case to prove trademark rights. So, but I suppose it's uh, not a public database, the trademark clearing house, the trademarks, it's not public. It's so not it's public. Not no. public, yeah. Yeah. So, it can't be searched at your end. But when you go to register a new GDRD, some uh, notifications are there on the uh, registrar website that it is already someone else trademark. But if you're filing an INDRP, does having first entry help you or not? No. You have a trademark which you have filed. Does it not help you prove your case? That only a trademark certificate can help you. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll have to pause. You'll have to take this offline. I am running behind schedule. I, I really would like to have these questions, but then no, all questions are interesting. The answers are long. Okay, please go ahead. Take this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, as a domain investor, you know you come across a domain being auctioned on an auction site like Siru or Namecheap and it happens to be a celebrity name, exact celeb name, which you unknowingly buy from there. You pick it up for some other reason like for PR or something back uh, in 2011 or something. And then the celebrity happens to acknowledge that and say that it is supposed to be my name. And then by then you are already using it for several reasons apart from, not at all from that celebrity. So what are you supposed to do with that name? I mean, you didn't buy it for the celebrity fame or the name, or you're not using for that purpose. But now it is in your profile, and the celebrity is claiming that it is supposed to be his or her. Then what, what, what is the future? Did you register PriyankaChopra.com? <laughs> the name it is somebody maybe bigger than her. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to answer? Or I think you can better answer it. Right, so, uh, you know, it, just because a name is offered for sale, even at auction, or even because it's available for registration, doesn't mean it's lawful to own that domain name. Uh, just because, like, for example, a knife shop can sell knives, but it's how it's used which makes it illegal, right? So, um, same, same with domain names, and same with the celebrity domain names. So, for example, if I registered PriyankaChopra.com, uh, and I used it as a fan site, to ex, you know, to talk about Priyanka and and to uh, blog about her and post photos. It's not connected to the celebrity. It's not connected wise. to the celebrity. Yeah, I see. Wise, it doesn't so, uh, mention the celebrity. It doesn't mention the. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Can we be a little quick about the deliberations, please? So, sir, the website is booked yes. on a celebrity's name. The content and the use of the website is nowhere related to the celebrity. Yes. So, a Priyanka Chopra website, but it's actually discussing fashion. Unknown to 
Priyanka Chopra. I didn't know that she was supposed to be a celeb. It okay, was it just happens to be idea. a celebrity. Yeah. Okay, like, uh, all right. So if, if a domain name uh, can be shared by many people, like Priyanka, could be, it might, may not be her, it could be anybody, then it's lawful. If, it's, if it's, it corresponds to a celebrity's name and it's a very unique name, then it can be used for non-commercial purposes. That's the short answer. You okay. can, otherwise you will have to find someone by a similar name to show that you registered on her behalf. Now that's the jugaad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time to move forward. Thank you both the gentlemen. Thank you for Thank being you. here with us. Let's have a big round of applause for both of these lawyers for taking time out to be here with us.